All right, welcome back for another Sony Vial overview video. Today, I thought I'd show something different and kind of work on my formatting on these videos. Right now, I have a Sony CD slash DVD player in front of you. This is one that I picked up a few years ago, and I thought with its visuals, it was kind of striking. I was sold this a few years ago by a local stereo shop of mine, and I figured it would be an interesting piece to my collection. This is a CD and DVD player. The model is DVP slash F21. It was made in Japan, and the year is 2001 if I recall correctly. I couldn't find anything else that dated it earlier than that. According to the manual, it was 2001. It does also mention its manufacturer location on the back of the unit. Along with the disc formats that it supports, this one also supports Dolby Digital and Dolby DTS. Now, I had read on Amazon and other listings like CNET that this was a three-way mount unit. Uh, evidently, there is a wall mount that you could get for it. I didn't notice it online in my quick research, but the other two ways are obvious. You could have it horizontal or vertical. And then on to inputs like we usually do. On the back of the unit, you have a little panel to cover up the IO unit. This thing slides off relatively easy. Now you can see we have S-Video, we have Composite Out, we have Digital Optical or Toss Link, and then we have RCA Stereo of right and left channel out. We also have the DC connection for the power in. This uses a 10.5 volt connection. Any standard Sony of that size should work. Sony power adapter that is. One peculiar thing for this being a 2001 unit is the fact that it's a DVD player with no component out. At this time, that should have been available as far as I can recall. I have no idea what does include component. I don't know if that was just for this being a budget unit or to make the size relatively small. I assume what they could have done was put a D-terminal connection next to S-Video, and for those that don't know, D-terminal is the same video type connection as component. It is just one connection type. It was only used in Japan, really. Alright, so let's get to connecting this bad boy up. I have the power connector, which was the original power brick that came with it. Unfortunately, I lost the two-prong thing, but it uses a standard connection. And then for demonstration purposes, I'm going to just use S-Video. I will connect the composite cable just to keep it from wobbling around. I do not have stereo RCA available easily at hand at the moment. And with a little bit of difficulty, I slide the panel back in place, which you can see it kind of tucks the cables in all nice like. So they're not all over. I also decided to use my PVM for the video display purposes on this. And it looks like at a certain point it has the same background splash screen as most Sony DVD players up to even this point. Uh, as far as the low end budget models, they all seem to still use this blue screen from what I've seen up until at least 2016. I might be wrong. Now onto the remote. In North America, this came with an RMT slash D137A. In Japan, it would come with an RMT slash D137J. The only real difference between the different remotes is the language. The J1 has Japanese for it, and then the A, which I assume means Americas, has English on it. The remote requires two AA batteries. I happen to have two Sony ones lying around. And one nice feature is this unit, like many other Sony remotes for DVDs and VCRs, has a control mechanism where you can control Sony TVs. Fun fact, the control signal is the same on Bravias as it is Trinitron's back from the 80s. All right, let's take a look at the front. Out front, you have your basic inputs. You have the power button. You have the eject button. There is a light for surround sound. Your display unit, which also shows what format you have. <clears throat> Your display unit, which shows which format media you have in it, along with the track info. Then you have your play button, your pause button, your stop button, and your track forward and backward button. All these run standard on most players, so you should be aware of what they do at this point.
For reference material, I decided to go with Pink Floyd's Pulse. I happen to have this on all three standard formats that this player supports, including VCD. Sadly, we will not demonstrate the audio from these as there's a few issues. One, I don't want another lawsuit from Roger Waters. Two, my PVM only has mono audio. And three, YouTube compresses it. And this is more of a display of the unit, not so much the audio capabilities. I will not be displaying the surround sound capable functions of this unit. All right, let's start with the VCD version of this. This was an import from Malaysia. And for those that don't know, VCD is a video CD format. Uh, it was not really popular or used at all in the United States or in Canada as far as I can tell. It was more popular in Asia, but don't feel too left out as the video quality of these discs happens to be lower quality than that of a VHS. The compression rate was just too much at the moment, so a VHS will actually give you crisper quality if you use a CRT. As we transition over the DVD, I decide to lay it down horizontally to give you a different viewpoint. Also, you can notice some of the advantages DVD had over VCD, such as the fact that you have one, a menu, and you can actually skip to different parts or tracks, and then two, the visual quality. I'd say we didn't miss out too much in the States with the lack of VCD support. All right, let's transition on to the last format. I have a CD copy of Pink Floyd's Pulse. This happens to be the 2016 reissue under Legacy Records, which is a subcompany of Sony Music. One of the most appealing features of this visually is the fact that you can see the disc actually spinning through the little window. And as far as the CD playback function goes, there's not really anything special. Your display on the front of the unit will actually show your tracks and stuff, but on screen it won't really display much info. You can see the information toggle between the different options for audio output if you change that, but besides that, it's just a standard splash screen. Now for my final note, I've debated since this has Toslink out, if I will use it for when I eventually make a video on me copying stuff in the DAT format. Or possibly I'll use it to copy stuff from the mini discs. So you might see this show up in another Sony file video down the road. And as we exit out this video, I'd like to mention a few things that weren't previously mentioned. This does play CDRs and CDRW, so burnt discs will play fine on this, but it does not look like it supports MP3 discs. I also didn't notice anything in the document listing anything about A-Track, which was a Sony's audio format that they had released in the late 90s. The unit also still has listings on Amazon, but they seem to be broken. And it also looks like this unit came in black. Although there are better DVD players out there, and then possibly Blu-ray players which will serve the same function, including component output, this is definitely a nice little piece visually. I like to say though that visually this thing's rather appealing. Also it's neat to look back in time and see where we were back in 2001 as far as DVDs were. I don't really see any standard or cheap players that try to have any kind of visual flair like this unit. With this one's aesthetics, I feel like it really adds to the Sony file archives. Thank you everybody for watching this video and I hope you've enjoyed everything that we've done in the past three or so years. Expect more videos in this format in the near future. Until next time, stay safe and Sony Files signing out.